If you're taking this course, then I have to assume that you're relatively new to Photoshop. I'm sure you've probably heard someone use Photoshopped as a verb, as in, man, there's no way that that guy could have a beard that epic, it must have been Photoshopped, because no one would possibly take the time to carve in those stripes. But, I want to take a little bit of time to just go over a few of the things that Photoshop can do for you. You can use it in illustration, you can use it in photography, you can use it in web design. So we're going to take a few minutes now and just take a look at all of the different things that Photoshop can achieve. So when most people think of Photoshop, they imagine a photographer sitting in a room somewhere, taking photos for magazine covers and turning something that looks like this into something that looks like this. Now this is also a source of a lot of controversy for Photoshop, but you have to admit it is pretty amazing. For the most part, I find that when you're discussing Photoshop with people who don't know very much about it, they automatically assume that this is basically the only thing that you can do with it. They also assume that it's only a tool for photographers. And, while yes, there are a lot of photographers who use it to change a scene like this into a scene like this, there are many, 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 many uses for Adobe Photoshop. So in this video, I'm going to take you through a couple of the different things that you can do with Photoshop. Some of them you may not have known possible. All right, so the example on the left is what's known as image manipulation. And you can see that right at the bottom here where it says image manipulation. It's where you take an existing photo and you use Photoshop to change it, where you adjust the colors, move things around, add elements from other photos, and you turn it into a work of art that more fits your vision. It's, it's kind of a cross between painting and photography because you're not using elements of paint to create your work. You're using elements of photo and blending them seamlessly in with other elements changing them, color manipulation, etc. The image on the right, as you can see, most of the human elements on the before picture have been eliminated, as well as this obnoxious sign here on the beach proclaiming that no dogs are allowed to swim here. And the colors in the image have been slightly brightened and tweaked a little bit. Let's take another quick example of straight color correction. This image is actually not the original. Now at first glance, it looks like something you could have taken on your home camera, but the actual home camera image is right here underneath and as you can see the color is really yellowed out so we haven't removed uh, any blemishes or nuances or people in the background in this image this is basic straight color correction where we've taken the color information inside our original photo and we've made the skin look more skin colored and we've altered the color of the background so that's strictly color correction which is when you take an initial photo and you change the colors to make it look more realistic or brighter or fit the vision that you have. In the photographic realm, we also have image restoration. Now image restoration is, strictly speaking, photo manipulation, but specifically, it's when you take an old image like the one we have here on the left and repair everything inside it to give us the one that's on the right. As you can see, the one that's on the right is a far better quality than the one on the left. The artist has taken out all of these tears and the wrinkles a lot of this spotting that goes on here, which you'll see in a lot of older photographs, and smoothed everything out and made the image more crisp in the new one. Here's another example of the same thing, a little more color correction added. As you can see, it's brighter here. We have taken out a little bit of, we have a zit under there, <laughs> under the kid's nose, um, and we've gotten rid of the tearing. Now, if we start to pull out of the realm of strict photography and push closer into the realm of painting, the next subtle grade between the two is digital matte painting. Now, you've seen digital matte painting quite a bit if you've watched any sort of movie. This right here is a combination of painting with either traditional paints or digital paint in Photoshop and photography. We've taken some photos in the background here. We've got this castle. Some of these are photographic elements and some of them are paint. We have a couple of these. These are typically used in film. When you have your characters in a background that doesn't exist, sure, it's easy to build a cottage or some small set, but if you wanted to build a huge landscape, then, you know, it takes nature millions of years to build the mountains, so you can only imagine how long it would take a small construction crew. It's way easier to just paint it. And this here, being a combination of paint and photography, is a good enough painting that our eyes are fooled when you put it in the background into thinking that it's just part of the set. Here's another more modern one, a cityscape. And you can see there are a couple of uh, sort of flying ships here composited into the image as well. 
in film, obviously, anything that's moving, the smoke here would be animated, the ships would be animated. It wouldn't be just like, hey, look at the background, there's a bunch of ships hovering in midair, and they're blurred out as though they're moving. If we come back here and we start talking about magazine covers, not only can you manipulate and create the images for the cover of the magazine, but you can also create the layout of the magazine itself. This is more of a brochure layout, but you can see how real easily some of the elements here can be added into a magazine layout. Which brings me to my next point, which is design. And you can do a lot of design within Photoshop. Some of this has probably been done in Illustrator because Illustrator gives you more exact lines and a lot of logo design is actually done in Illustrator because Illustrator produces vector artwork, which is infinitely scalable. Here are just some more logo designs. So what else do we have in design? Well, I bet you didn't know this. Fashion design is often done in Photoshop. Sure, this looks like a cartoon character, but this would be the initial concept for this line of clothing. And of course, once we start, start talking about concept design, all sorts of things begin to play in the mix. For instance, here is a concept design for a futuristic Audi hovercraft. Here we have concept design for an outfit, presumably for a video game. More automobile concept design. Character design movie set design. This would probably be handed then over to a 3D department or a digital matte painter and then they would create this set for a movie. More character design. All sorts of things. These will generally be, here's more fashion design for you. These will generally be the preliminary drawings that will take place in pre-production on a video game or in the fashion industry or on a movie set. And this is referred to as concept design because this is somewhere between a completely finished illustration and a concept that can be easily changed. As you can see over here on the left, we have different silhouette forms, and these are essentially initial sketches so we know what this creature is gonna look like in silhouette, which we'll talk about later in the design series, the importance of silhouette. One step past concept design is going to be illustration, which also can take several forms. Uh, these next few that I have to show you here are uh, book and magazine covers. There's a book cover right there for you. So illustration would be that concept design taken an extra step further and completed in a finished drawing, which would then go to print. We would have possibly, you know, along the top or along the side here, you'd have the name of the book and any other sort of type that had to go in there. We make the difference between illustration and concept design almost solely in the completed aspect of the work. Concept design is illustration where we're trying to draw out ideas and illustration proper is those ideas realized to their fullest extent. Even though a couple of these aren't in Photoshop, this is uh, one of my favorite illustrators of all time, Norman Rockwell. And then we go back over here and we see Ryan Benjamin who brings me to my next category which is another aspect of illustration, sequential art. And specifically here, I'm talking about comic books. In modern times, comic books are almost entirely completed inside Photoshop, from the initial sketches, to the layout of the various pages, to the coloring, all of the lettering here that you'll see, probably done in Photoshop or a similar software. Um, and this is another one of my favorite comic book artists, Travis Charest. Anyway, I'll cover my last uh, area of Photoshop right now, which is web design. Almost every aspect of web design, with the exception of the coding itself, can be done inside Photoshop. From the initial layout, which is what you're going to see here, to all of the images in Photoshop, all of the, the little buttons, the icons cropped in Photoshop, if not entirely made in Photoshop, like is probably the case with this easel here on the right. These little arrows, quite possibly made in Photoshop and exported out. So just about every aspect of web design goes through Photoshop in some way. Anyway, that's quite a lot to take in. And believe it or not, I haven't even talked about everything you can do with Photoshop. I've just tried to cover all of the basics for you and expand your mind a little bit. And now I hope you have a better idea of everything you can do with Photoshop. The purpose of this course is to provide you with the very basic foundation of how to use Photoshop and then as we move into further courses, we're gonna show you how to do each one of these things individually, at least in part, so that you can decide where you wanna go with Photoshop and how to get there. So that's all for now. 
Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.